Hello! Last week we attended the learning day of the Swiss Chronometry Society. This society is 90 years old and it gathers every year all the head of research and development and researchers of the watchmaking Swiss industry. And this year we wanted to know first why people are there and also to focus on the thematic of the escapements because there are some improvements and some novelties who have been presented that are really quite new. So let's start with why people attend this day. C'est là qu'il faut venir pour pouvoir rencontrer des collègues dans le même domaine d'activité, puis échanger les idées euh, scientifiques, techniques. Ça permet de, de, de lier des relations, d'être de, au, au parfum des nouvelles technologies, de ce, qui, de, ce qui, de ce qui vient de la concurrence également. I'm here to, to see the latest development in, in uh, engineering and about watchmaking and horlogerie. C'est absolument nécessaire de se retrouver. Euh, premièrement, on est ici entre collègues. Euh, on est dans, dans une famille, n'est-ce pas Et je crois que c'est très important de se retrouver pour communiquer euh, sur, euh, sur nos, nos spécificités euh, de notre métier. Since a few years now, the escapement is really a very important topic for watchmakers. And the technology of the Silicon, for instance, helped a lot in that. We know that Yuli Snart and Patek Philippe, Rolex, or the Swatch Group also with Omega, for instance, or Brogge, made big, big improvements in that. This learning day has been a première for Vaucher Manufacture, the manufacturer of the Parmigiani Group, because it presented a new escapement developed in collaboration with Zexam, and this escapement is called the Genecon escapement. The Genecon escapement uses flexible blades to create oscillation. In fact, it's an amazing construction made only of silicon. It is based on an old type of escapement invented by John Harrison called the Grasshopper escapement because of the very special shape of its anchor. The Genecon integrates two components that are particularly special, an isochronism corrector and a very particular balance wheel set nicknamed Whitrick in honor of William Henry Whitrick, an important scientist specialized in blade springs. The isochronism corrector, which looks like a Star Trek vessel, ensures that the oscillations of the balance wheels are regular. But the real star is the Whitrick set, as it contains neither a hairspring nor an axis. It is in fact fixed directly on the anchor, where it makes its vibration. Its blades are integrated in the middle, where their crossing points represent the virtual axis. The Genecon escapement is named after its inventor, Pierre-Marcel Genecon. He used to be an engineer at the XEM, a research center specialized in microtechnology that has now developed this project in collaboration with Vaucher Manufacture. Vaucher Manufacture belongs to the Parmigiani Group. And that is why the first watch equipped with the Genecon escapement will be in the Parmigiani Fleurier brand. Right now, the project is at an experimental stage, and no less than three to five years of research and development are still necessary to potentially integrate the Genecon escapement into a watch. As of right now, a working prototype has been integrated into its conventional movement, which has increased the power reserve by a factor of six. The next test will focus in particular on resistance to shock and aging. We had also an interesting presentation from Professor Simon Henein, who is head of the Instant Lab Laboratory from the EPFL. Invented by the Instant Lab Institute under the direction of Professor Henein, the isospring is an experimental concept that eliminates the traditional escapement altogether. Indeed, the isospring replaces the back and forth oscillations with a two dimensional, unidirectional movement. In other words, the usual tock tick disappears as the system works more like a disc brake on a car. However, there is no friction and the spring barrel's energy is instead controlled by a construction made out of two sets of blade springs positioned at 90 degrees to each other. In motion, the whole construction moves in an elliptic and regular way that allows time to be kept. But the actual prototype weighs about 4 kilograms and the part is still long before it can be successfully integrated into a watch. But this idea is somehow explored by Debetin for three years now with the Resonic system. By chance, we visited Debetin a few weeks ago because of our topic about adjustment of a movement and we could ask Denis Flagellet directly about the state of the art of the Resonic project at Debetin now. So, let's go and listen to him on s'est rendu compte qu'en fait on était à l'extrême limite euh, que pouvait supporter euh, un échappement de balancier spirale en fonctionnement à 10 Hz. Mais bien sûr, on avait dans la tête d'aller plus loin et de trouver vraiment une solution d'augmenter la fréquence euh, mécanique. En 2011, nous avons convoqué la presse, nous avons fait une, une présentation. Depuis ce moment-là, on a un blog où on explique absolument tout ce que l'on a 
trouvé, où on a continué à l'alimenter, euh, où on a fait une petite vidéo pour expliquer euh, ce qu'était ce que l'on a appelé la raisonnique de Béthune. L'idée était de dire euh, arrêtons de faire un principe de balancier spiral, donc d'oscillateur, et allons voir du côté euh, de la résonance euh, pour voir quel, euh, quel système euh, cyclique qui évite les allers-retours, aussi bien du balancier spiral que de l'encre, pouvait être possible. En gros, euh, on n'arrive pas à aller assez vite, on abandonne le moteur à explosion et on passe au moteur à réaction. Mmh.